It's the Garage Shared Podcast, and I am Gavin Ford. Get right. And I'm Aki. And what a fucking rootin' tootin' garage special we've got today. <laughs> a few weeks back, we put the underrated vocal tune. Was that underrated vocal tune? Well, we did put it, but it got blocked. It got blocked. Because <laughs> they obviously are quite rated. If, if big labels are signing them and blocking them. <laughs> yeah. So we put that back up now. It's up on SoundCloud. Not the video isn't up, but it's on SoundCloud. Okay, we'll get the video up there. We'll cut all the music out and do that, won't we? Yeah. Um, but in that thing, whilst we were doing that, we had loads and loads of suggestions for other topics. Yeah. And Chris, you've selected this week's topic, and we've been yeah. we've been uh, pre pre production talking about it. We've been we talking about it all day. Have we? It's turned into <laughs> yeah. We've literally been talking about garage music all day, which you know pretty much we do every day. But, <laughs> yeah. But even more passionately than normal. So, Chris, what's what's today's subject for the people at home? So today's subject, we are going to talk about our favourite and what we consider to be the best garage tunes featuring MCs. So we're going to go through what our personal picks are. Not necessarily the best, what our personal picks are, and then we will talk about what are considered to be the best. Yeah, yeah, we'll, see what, like we'll see where it leads us, shall we? We'll no. see what doors it takes us down. Yeah, so um, that's what we're going to speak about. As always, remember at the end of the episode, if there's stuff that we've missed, please comment below. But for the moment, we'll go into what ours are. So I'll start off. Um, and one that, I mean, the way that I looked at it was like stuff that always... Because essentially we're looking at older stuff. Mm -hmm. There are newer, more tunes being made, which we spoke about as well. There's more stuff being made. But at the moment, I looked at it and going, okay, I'm going to look at older records. And yeah. like, as in, what kind of takes me back? You know what I mean? Like what sort of like elicits memories for me? So yeah. one of those is God's Gift and Mike Tribute. Where yeah, but I had this on vinyl. Yeah, we had it in the record shop. I can remember... I can remember getting it in a record shot. It's, it, it's impressive, isn't it? It's an impressive record, isn't it? It's great. I mean, for those that don't know, God's Gift was a member of Pay As You Go. Yeah. Um, and he had his own record, which basically tributes, like it said, Mike Tribute, but it tributes to every MC in the scene. You think if, it, if he was to release that now, it's not the same thing, but back then, obviously a video of him doing it, all the different voices would have gone viral and thing like it's... yeah. It's like uh, an example of, yeah, he's way way ahead of his time, and um, but it worked on like obviously like MCs are so prominent and their voices so prominent and their lyrics so prominent that just the audio of that would mm. was a huge deal. Yeah, it was impressive how he put it all together as well. He took all the best hooks from all of those MCs and just it just yeah the wordplay he used to sort of stitch it all together and stuff rather than it just be like a spewing of like random things. He stitched it together, really cool. Um, just became instantly memorable for me and all my friends listening to Garage at the time and became one of those ones that, yeah, yeah you still I remember the lyrics to back this day. No, it didn't really work. I, we, I played it out a few times, but it didn't really work. It's one of those songs you just sit home and listen to and go, appreciate the work and effort you put into that. Yeah, I can, I can remember it coming to the record shop. I remember thinking, fucking hell, this is but impressive. I, it sold a lot of copies, though, didn't it, in the yeah. shop? Like, it sold well, just didn't really work in the clubs. But I remember thinking, this is fucking impressive. And yeah, I, I, I think it's I weird played it out and it didn't go. It's weird that it doesn't work in the clubs because everyone knows the lyrics to it. You'd expect it to be like, do you know what I mean? Like, if you played it out and yeah, everyone knew the lyrics to it, everyone I just remember it, playing it thinking, I was expecting it to go down a lot better than it did. And it? Yeah, same. And uh, I don't think I've ever heard anyone else play it. No, and then after that, I didn't really play it anymore because it just really didn't, like. Yeah. Shit selection in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be. <laughs> um, but yeah, like yeah, not necessarily a club record, but an important thing. I still think, and um, yeah, it was just one of the rare moments I think where it brought everyone together because obviously yeah. there was you know crews forming off after that. And yeah, definitely. Yeah. Going that, so yeah, so that's my first pick. Would be my but personal pick of my tribute. Yep, that was my turn. Is it? Yeah, yeah it's you your know turn. how it goes, mate. The routine. <laughs> This is probably not a best tune, but for me, this is one of the best verses ever, especially on the Garage record. It is So Solid Crew featuring Miss Dynamite, Envy. And um, yeah, she does the first verse, and I think it's like 64 bars, but she absolutely destroys yeah, it. Yeah, she kills that. It's the best Garage verse of all time. 
Yeah. Oh. You guys should have said it as well. So I remember. Bam, we need like a big button for when big statements <laughs> are made. That's, yeah. I remember going to the record shop, see Gav and Alex, and this song just come out of nowhere, didn't it? It did come out of nowhere. There was no, like, well, I guess. I don't think there's any promos. It just came out like. Well, they were both Hugh Jacks at the yeah. time. Yeah. Like, and arguably uh, two of the biggest sort of garage based acts at that time. Yeah. And then they, they were like, we've got something for you, and like, put it on. And I was like, wow, where'd this come from? <laughs> I remember put, putting it on and coming to the record shop and playing it and just being like, wow. Like, wow. I yeah. don't think I've ever listened. I don't think I've ever listened past her verse. I think I just <laughs> rewound it like 400 I times. I think you played it. We played it at the record shop for about an hour, just constantly. Asher and Mega are both good on it as well, but she does I have kill no it. Idea. I'm sure they are, but I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah. No, the rest of the song is actually good, but the Miss Dynamite verse is... This verse was so good, and this was just before her album came out. Yeah. Which made me disappointed with the album... You're expecting to be more hype because I wanted it to be like this. Yeah, I, 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 yeah it's more. But uh, now, now, obviously, you listen back and Appreciate I don't it, think yeah. she ever made a bad record. Did she? <laughs> no, I mean, she is for me. She's like the best overall MC. Yeah, I agree on record. I agree. I think she's the Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> of MCs, <laughs> right? Well, so you're saying she's the best MC of all time on record? Yeah, I think she is. Because, and I'll explain to you why. Like the is a big I'll, I'll explain to you why, right? Well, like, just to compare it to Cristiano Ronaldo. Does it in different countries. She does it across different genres, oh, right? Good, good Did Garage, smashed yeah. it. What else has she done? Drum and bass. Yep. Gold Dust, smashed it. Uh, UK Funky. UK Funky, Katie B. Yeah. Lights on. Um, dubstep, Red Light, what are yep. you talking about? Uh, Mumbaton with DJ Fresh. <laughs> Yeah, and DVD, like she's done it across. I think her voice is um, DJ, DJ, DJ Zinc, what? like well, that house, crack, crack, crack house, house, but yeah, bass house. Like, bass house. That's yeah. like five different genres. Also, she come back to Gary's recently, Red Light, yeah. and did again. And I would say, you could argue. Well, that was clips. It was Jungle. So yeah. she's done Jungle as well. Yeah. And the Gary's remix of that. You could argue that every record that she's done in in every genre. But every record she's done in every genre, every one of those records is a top 10 biggest records in that genre. Yeah, you, you probably yeah. could say that, definitely. Yeah. And look how important Boo was. Yeah, you Boo, know, is, Boo is, got, is one of the, the biggest guys. It's the most important the one, 10. yeah, 100%. And Gold Dust must be one of the biggest drum and bass records. Big up Sticky. Can't forget Sticky on Boo, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Gold Dust, massive. Yeah, still gets played to this day. Gold Dust. Still gets played at clubs, student events, all that sort of stuff. UK Funky one might, 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 might let her down. I don't know, I think Light's on... It's not top 10. It's still a big... In that genre, UK Funky? Commercial. Biggest, I guess think it was of, Think of any other... Com- how many more commercial UK Funky records there are. Yeah, it's up there. It's up there, but definitely. She, I can't... She hasn't missed. She's never missed. Nah, any genre. Never. Any Anything, she's never missed. Never. And it must be... It's, it's, it must be a reflection of how good she is because she do, like she doesn't release much. No, and also the, the producers she, she works with are always top quality as well. Yeah, because we've I've given her record every gig we've done with her. I've, <laughs> Sorry, <yeah. laughs> I've, yeah. I've given her USBs every every gig we've done. Yeah, I remember we were going to get gag goes, oh, Gav's oh, got to get and USB I, done. I prepare music for her before every single gig we play. That's her taste. Try, yeah, try, every time try and coax her in. There's no coaxing. She's not coming on. <laughs> Great choice. Act. She's the night. She's she's the <laughs> nicest person ever as well. Yeah. She's yeah. so good and so talented and the nicest person ever. Like, yeah, no. big up, big up, Miss Dynamite. Yeah, that that's that's my first choice. So good let's choice. move to Gab for his first choice. Yeah, I mean, so. you would say, you, I mean, yeah, you'd argue that Boo was a, like, but yeah, that's the best ver- verse. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what the rest of the record was like. So. <laughs> <laughs> have a listen, mate. I'll have a listen later. If yeah. I can get past the verse, I, don't, I just keep. There was this mix that Rossi B and Luke used to do uh, these, on one of their more to the floor things, and they throw in envy and they do this. I just can't get out every time I hear envy. That's what I think of. And then when it goes, when that's the bottom the microphone, explosive, and they want it back. Yeah, I've, explosive, I've seen it. Explosive, I've seen it. Eh, 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 and I, that's every time I hear that record, that's all I expect someone to that's do. That's me. That's me playing it. Yeah. <laughs> that's where they got it from. They must have heard me. Yeah, I've, yeah. <laughs> just playing it to myself, just rewinding it and rewinding it. <laughs> just beating the fuck out of whatever I could find. <laughs> So what's your choice then, Gav? Another one that makes you beat the fuck out of anything we can find. Pay as you go, no we. That. Yep. Um. And do you know what? It's not like that Miss Dynamite one where at the time I was like, this is fucking mental. At the time, I don't remember being massively into it. Really? I remember liking it, but oh. now 
it, it the record just gets me fired up. Yes, when that beat kicks in, that, when we got it in the shop, I mean? that lead melody kicks in, it's scary. Like that. yeah. When I first heard it, I was like, "It's right." Now it's like I just feel like it must be really cause riots. Yeah. But I guess what do you think about the MCs on it at the time? Because at the time, it was I did I didn't really identify them as individuals. It was like the crew, like at that stage, it was early days for the individual. But now, when you think back, yeah, the lineup. Yeah, yeah, they weren't. They were, yeah, very much pay as you go. Yeah, I mean, you knew the members of pay as you go, but they were very much pay as you go was the name. Yeah, yeah. But now, when you think back, it's it, it, it makes sense. The beat's amazing. Like, like it's incredible. Yeah, Major Ace sounds amazing. Major they all sound amazing. Who's Major Ace sounds amazing. He's passed away, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. But that, that amazing, yeah. yeah, that line there, no wee line, goes off in the club. <sighs> it's God's gift that does the line as well. Is it? I think so. Oh, I thought it was Major Ace. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure. God's Gift is on the tune as well. Think, so the no, MCs, it's, it's Major Ace. No, it's Major Ace because when Major Ace performs MCs, he, he, does, does, it as well. he does the thing live. Well, the, tune, the MCs are Major Ace, Wiley, God's Gift and Maxwell on the tune. Yeah. Right. But then, yeah, yeah so you're right then, maybe. The, the I think so. Heavyweight like that when you think about it. Yeah, and yeah. what's the other one they did? Champagne. Champagne Dance, dance or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, ago. yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. a good one. Not as quite as good, but it's nah, still pretty good. <laughs> Shit. Sticky mix that squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's like. So yeah. Well, I would have. I, I say if I would have listened to Envy beyond that verse, I'm, I would definitely would have gone for it. But I can't. I can't say it's best tune because I've got no idea. But yeah, I've always I would have had that. But yeah, No We is. It was the first. The first record that come to mind was that. I had a away. bootleg of No We over the Super Glue Rhythm, the Heartless Crew. Thing. Oh, that was a f- yeah, because obviously they had a big. Oh yeah, yeah. Back and they in the put day. On, the, on the reverse side, it had the actual vinyl of the um, live thing when they all had an argument. But on the reverse side, it had no we over super glue. Really, <laughs> and it, I was like, I love that vinyl. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> probably, it's probably in the loft. My mum's loft somewhere. Really, you still got your records? Got some, I think. Yeah. Line and line. also, what about fucking Naki sneaky? Um, did a mix on Kiss FM last night and <laughs> played. Um, don't be afraid. Oh, USL. Yeah, and I got I got it remastered because the quality was bad. And selector piped up. Oh, that's, that's good quality. I come that, and I said, "Oh, we had it remastered." And Aki, yeah. fucking slippery Aki, comes out. Got he's got his big. He's, you had loads of stuff remastered that you sent him shit quality versions of. <laughs> he's had remastered. And he's been sat on a fucking pile of sneaky fucking UK garage yeah. burners. They're records that need to be remastered because they're based... Like yeah, the but you need to send them to us, you <laughs> sneaky <Yeah>. fuck. <laughs> I think you've got a few of them. No, Chris. yeah, I've got a few of them. You were listening off every... like. Uh, you've got to keep a few weapons in the bank, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, not the ones he sent. <laughs> <laughs> it's one-way traffic here, mate. Absolute it scumbag. Is. Well, anyway, they got them now. Yeah. So <laughs> I have All's forgiven. Anyway. No, yes, it still hasn't sent them. He keeps going. I've got the folder ready to send it. Yeah, it's not sent though, is it? Chris, Chris as soon I've got as this podcast is done, Chris, before I've got we you, leave mate. this office. Yeah. So, all right, um, my <laughs> next pick, um, bit slight bit different, not necessarily a club MC tune, but one of my favourites just because of when it came out and just remembering whereabouts I was and is the streets as it come to this. I never had anything like it. Yeah. It was so different. I didn't know what to make of it when I first heard it. And then obviously I was like growing me and I was like, well, this didn't know a lot about it. I didn't know a lot about him. Do you know what I mean? When I heard it, I didn't know where I he's from. I put it in the record shop. Didn't know if he yeah. was where he's from London or if he was up north. Yeah. Like you can't really place the accent when you first kind of hear it. And I wasn't sure, yeah, what it was about. I didn't know. I guess the yeah, internet was around, but it weren't as important where you can find out everything about someone now. Isn't it? Do you know yeah, what I mean? it, it's all these, all these records. The, the thing about it is you, Literally, all you had is that music. You say you don't know who the page you go, people are, you just know the record. You don't know, you don't know anything about, and that record was a real, that was a, a great thing about Garage at that stage is it was a real love it or hate it time because it was starting yeah. to diversify. Like that Daniel Bedenfield record come in, and that was a you love it or you hate it. That was mm. a love it or you hate it. And then like Pulse X was a fuck it, oh, I think everyone saw. That was a game changer, Paul. Six. That's for another podcast. Definitely. But like, <laughs> but these were all like records were coming that were on the like. Yeah. That you went. Oh, this is different. Like narrows. When you're like, what, uh, you know, they're starting to get. They all. They're, I think they're all similar time, unless I'm just merging all of garage into one. But this is all like 
kind of started moving away in different streams. Yeah, I just like, yeah, I remember like them all being quite close together, make the vinyl. Certainly. The diversity yeah. was, was beginning to be apparent and stuff. And then like to go just to actually focus on the streets and stuff, just the yeah. the wordplay was so different to anything else. Because a lot of MC records, at least back then, were focused on what they did live. So they feature a lot of their hooks so they can get sung back to in the clubs and all that sort of stuff. His wasn't about that. He was telling stories spoken through it. Word, it was it? yeah, it was spoken word rap. I think more rap than actual MCing, I guess. Yeah. But it was just the way his whole flow was different to anything I'd ever heard. Because um, it was locked on, wasn't it? it? Come out on locked on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what people would get. Well, we got it because it was on like you just bought everything on locked on. Yeah, that's yeah. it. As a DJ, a, you as a label, we got as a sorry as a record shop, we got it as because it was locked on. And I, I can remember that. I can remember the. The divide, the love hate divide at the start. Yeah. People were like, "Well, this is like this, isn't it?" It's so yeah, it's so different because it's like, it's not like meant to be. It's just showing the diversity of garage. I mean, you got around that. There was remixes of it, you know, which for more yeah. for club based. But once you got around the fact of like, oh, this could, and then when he released more music, and you really realize what he was about. Yeah, but I think the making the making of truly great music is if you're reviewing it. You either it's one out of five or it's five out of five. If you've got an album and it's all across the board, two and a half out of five, mm. yeah. it's probably it's not as memorable. It's not as mem- like that. I think kind of if you've got an album that either you love or hate, you've you've, you've succeeded as making a yeah. piece. Like I think that's. But from that, the Streets album was amazing. Both of them. Were. Yeah, well, he grew yeah. and grew from that. Have you heard the new one? Yeah, it's funny. It's a, it's a the, oh, the back in June, first of June one. Was yeah, it? yeah you've got the bag. That, that's gonna <laughs> go off, surely. <laughs> the back and track's heavy on that. Oh, it's wicked. Because I just thought, because I saw the video, I saw the video of him just there. Have you seen that? Yeah, we did. The, yeah, I thought it was just gonna be like a TikTok kind of thing, or like. I think, yeah, I think it was I a TikTok thing. I, I didn't song. think it was gonna come out. <laughs> it's out. It's brilliant. Yeah, I've been. Mean, I like, have you ever seen Mike Skinner live? Like, as, even just do a DJ set. Oh, you remember we DJ'd it. with him, haven't we? Oh, he's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. He, he didn't have a headphone jack and his USB wasn't working for 20 minutes or something. He was, he was. But, but he, he smashed it, didn't he? He's bangers, though. He absolutely. Like, and he had yeah. yeah. some tunes that you didn't expect and stuff. Yeah, like. he's really good DJ. Just did, turns up not the best prepared. <laughs> but that's what that's what that's his character, in. isn't it? That's him. No, fair so, play. So yeah, that's for me. When you talk about love it or hate it, I'm definitely in the love it camp. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, that's my other pick. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's it. Because I... Um, I don't think would have come out. I guess because it's so different to what you associate is when you say a garage MC tune. Right. So I don't think I would have come round. To, you would have got there eventually, but that's good to be in your. So Ak. Yep. So my second one, and I think this might be a little bit underrated, but it's a personal favourite, is Stush Dollar Sign, produced by Sticky. That man Sticky again. God, yeah. He's. I this come up. This come after like Boo and that, and like obviously Boo was like the main. Big thing, sticky done, but I just thought this one. Another one we sent records to, not having it. <laughs> <laughs> I was stush. Yeah. But when it's, I don't know, it's kind of when it, she kick, kicks in, it just, yeah, it's a sound. It's her vocal on it is amazing as well. It's the, just a the little silence and just she, before the drop. Yeah. Yeah. And she flipped a tone of her it's voice that, to high and like, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's, she, it, it's it, absolutely yeah, wicked. That's tune. a great shout. So, yeah, I, I, you know, going on from like, Boo and that, then went to Stush. I just think, just thinking of what other tunes I can try and send her to get on now. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think she will. I think she'll do something. And she's in that Groove Armada one as well. Remember that? Yeah, she. That was she, a big old tune as well. We need to go back again. Need to have another swing at that. Yeah, but for me, that was that's under. For me, it's underrated. Yeah, track. yeah, yeah. Well, I it's one of the ones that I tend to like forget about, as in like with regards to playing it myself. Yeah, and then like if you hear it out, you're like. Oh, Banging this is when this drops, you know, and yeah. just the it, energy it, it gives you. And it was at a point where Sticky had so, the record label Social Circle Circles with yeah. Jason K, and everything come out on that label was huge. Like so every release they're putting out, yeah. So and I just knew it was going to be decent as soon as I saw it in the shop. But yeah, for me, it's a personal favorite, which is probably undermined from Boo a little bit. But. So Sticky, Sticky's arguably, you know, the best at doing beats for MCs. Ah. Oh. Well, according to this poll, <laughs> <laughs> according to us, uh, yeah. What, what else did he do that? I, it, that wasn't an MC, but Tales of the Hood, Tubby T was. Yeah, because yeah, because I you them lot are here now. Remember that? Did he? He didn't do the beat for hype, hype, did he? Or did he? No, it's because it, golly gosh, it was quite it too similar. It too I think he might have actually. Hype. 
Yeah, hype hype is on social circles. Yeah. It is sticky beat, isn't it? Yeah. Hell. And that was called Dem Crew or Dem Again, it's another so. record that we, you know, we, don't, we haven't included it, but like hype hype is such a big. Yeah. Remember just the whole. I mean, it's called, it does what it says on the tin, but I mean, people go also, nuts when that used to record used to get yeah, played. I mean, another one. What, what's close to that was More Fire, or it was close to Stush for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's that, that's got. That's got to be in there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like we're talking about the page you go thing. Like Morphy oh, yeah, were a crew at the time, I but mean, like that, you yeah. step away from Morphy and then look at what lethal. You can still play Morphy crew Oi now, and it, it, you get a reaction. I think you can still play any of these, can't you? Most of them, yeah. But I think Oi because it's got that big cool, cool look. Like well, it's more, it's got the more catchiness about it, hasn't it? Yeah. The Oi thing and stuff. Yeah, so you, yeah. It, um, it made its way onto probably some more compilations and somebody else did, I reckon. Which Morphy crew was Bizzle, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 and yeah, kind of kicked his career off. So great shout on that, Gav. Yeah. What's, your, what's your next pick? Um, heartless theme. Ooh. Yeah, I was watching the live stream. They did a live stream the other day, Garage Nation one, and I watched it. And then he pop, popped up on another live stream the next day. Bushkin, shout the vein, shout the veinies and shoshes, and. Did it both, and I just think I'm still not sick of this tune. Nah. It still fuck gets me fired up. We had it at the garden party a few years ago. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Just yeah. before you guys, he, he was playing. He was like on over my set, and just before you guys came on, and he finished. Like we made sure we finished on heartless rhythm. Yeah, yeah. And the place went off. Yeah, still and the, and the Christmas thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And and he's actually done a fucking track of us. So oh yeah, he actually no. did do a track. Of you, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that that was an amazing feeling uh, having Bushkin on all the tracks. Unbelievable. That was long awaited. That the, their tune was a long awaited. I think people were sort of like well, they did a whole album, didn't they? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, Chris Biscuit, Chris Biscuit, the Super Glue Rhythm. It's called, wasn't it? It was mm. they had it. They were playing it for a while, and then when I heard they vocaled it, I was like, please be good, because obviously, like, and it, but it they had an album it. that never come out. Even Fonty done a verse on. They had an album which never came out. Yeah, did they that? they did a deal because they were like the head of. They were the launching for one extra. Remember when that extra started? Uh-huh. They were the main people. Like they did a yeah. show that was like, oh, they can listen to it on the radio, and that's around that. And they signed a deal with some uh, Virgin, I think. I don't, I don't know. And oh, they I've did an, that. I think they did Virgin. an album, and it never come out. And oh, I, I didn't know about that. It's, it's from an, in, an in, I think they did a DJ Target interview or something. I'm going to try and find it and put it in the comments when I find it. We need to message Bushkin and say, send us a few of the unreleased tracks. Have a listen. I think everyone's, <laughs> uh, everyone's <laughs> asked. But that, like, yeah. The, uh, uh, yeah, I think it was done and I think it was good. I can't remember. I've, I'll find the interview and put it in so you can look, listen for yourselves. But there was a whole album that was completed and never came out. There was a Mighty Mo track called Why, which I liked a little bit after Super Glue Rhythm and stuff. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. But yeah, I was the same as you. I think everyone's waiting for the thing and you were like, ah, oh, hopefully like when they do come out of a tune, it's going to be killer because they are killer live and all this sort of stuff. And then it did and it dropped yeah, and everyone was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Their reputation live is like the best. And then obviously you're just a bit worried about. At what that happened. time, yeah, they were the they were the big, like yeah. the, the biggest thing and like everything they did was a big deal. So yeah, like it would be, it would be easier for them to, to drop the ball yeah. at the time because I think people were like, it's not going to transcend because it's difficult for things that work live if you see you know when you try and put it on a record yeah it just it rarely works but it's good because the tune's got the hooks but it's also got the lyrical word play that they're kind of known for yeah. and the sort of the little quirky bits they got in there and stuff yeah and it's sick and when they do that live and stuff it's very like definitive yeah. I, what i liked as well is they got fonty done a verse as well didn't he done the third verse on that track obviously he was known as a dj and he's fonty can go yeah can, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he really can yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah no nah, definitely that's yeah, big up show. to heartless man yeah so yeah, so I think that's six solid. MCs and then there's so many more. Like this is what we've been speaking about all morning, of like we've been speaking about ones that we were going to include, and then every so we we're like, well, what about this? Or what about yeah, because like Miss Nodder Mike Boo would 100 percent should be in there. Yeah, influential. Like we were saying about DJ Luck, MC Neat, a little, little bit, bit of, of luck. luck. How influential it was. Oxide yeah. and Neutrino was number one. Yes. So that, 21 yeah. seconds number one. I don't know if it did actually. I think it was, wasn't it? It might have. I'm not sure. Um, do you really like it? The mass ceremony. That, that was number one. one yeah. yeah, yeah, that was number one. A lot of like the biggest. We kind of ignored some of the obviously biggest records, um, but then they were personal picks. So like, yeah, you can't I- ignore those big ones that still stay around to this day. Yeah, I mean, you I, know, twenty one seconds still gets played. Do you really like I it? Still went, gets played. I went for ones that still get me fired up now, as they did then. 
like not necessarily the biggest, the most, important. but like I could have. Um, I mean, I think I think there's great records that come out now, like yeah, that MPH and Coco track come out this week. Them days, great tough too. culture. Yeah, that's all. Just the last two weeks. Well, think about how important yeah, um, Labrock Grove was. Yeah, yeah, and you are you'd argue. Well, that should be I, if you want to fucking argue, <laughs> I'll argue. <laughs> that should be in there. You'd argue that because of the timing, so like say, oxide neutrino uh, become from so solid, so solid come from you know like you know, there's like a chain where yeah, you yeah, know yeah, labels yeah, yeah. go oh this is big I don't need another one that one's big. Labrick Grove is completely by itself at a time when Garage Records weren't charting or doing what they're doing. Yeah, so it arguably is a. Uh, more important than the rest because it's because yeah there's no other, nothing else like it around it's just come back out of nowhere and gone bang there's a massive garage record yeah. so you'd argue that it's one of the biggest of all time and it's yeah. brought people's attention back to garage in a certain way as well so yeah I think it's a very important record I yeah, think yeah without you know obviously Conductor making the beat for him so big up and then without AJ doing that then you don't have some of the ones that we're talking about mm. the most recent ones you know like yeah. when when some of the other like artists like especially like the sort of the uk hip-hop artists and r&b artists looking at the success that did and going okay we should maybe dip our toe in the garage pool a little bit and see what yeah what it's like it's, it. it's kind of almost a thing to have the garage one on your album now if you're doing a yeah show a bit of variety and Getz stuff has got one on now on his album yeah, yeah like smash like, heavy it's heavy yeah, yeah it's really good no there's another one there's oh, like an actual a, out and out yeah but yeah, Smasher features on the album as well. Yeah, it, it, but like, and it's great. There was Chip and Bugsy Malone did like a garagey one. Bugsy yeah. Malone did a go. Like what it'd be, so yeah, what it'd be great for is to sort of have somebody doing more than just the odd uh, tune. Like it'd be cool to have artists that are sort of predominantly garage. Go in with the, yeah, the genre, yeah. I'm sure it'll come. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I think it's no doubt. on its way, definitely. Yeah, so yeah, they're good. I think honorable mentions. I think Flyby as well was because. Oh yeah, man! That can't can't forget about Flyby. Like flyby. I mean, Flyby and the bootlegger Flyby. Flyby because <laughs> the bootlegs are actually bigger, isn't it? Well, because it's all the biggest garage records with think Flyby over the top of it. The best one of the best things they done was put on the vinyl. They put the acapella on it because it's yeah. It's, kits get rebooted everywhere. You hear it all the time, which I think was a good idea. That's clever. Clever, yeah. So I mean, they. Was the other Quankai did? Flow. Flows, yeah. Down. You got to give me that. He did oh. the Love Come Down. The rem- oh, yeah? That. Yeah. Um, that f- Flow was like a record that was constantly in the record shop, constantly selling. Just that you could just never... It was just always... Yeah, Flow was a good one. Mark Rough Rider, Joy. Anything Vap- MC Vapor did. Vapor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could go. On, this could go on for a long time. Move actually. your body at Vapor. Just remember how like everyone yeah. was... You know, especially we were all at school when we first kind of heard that. Yeah, and I just remember like obviously the lyrics are being like oh, I remember I was at school and and just all just all my mates were just like worshiping that record. Well, we're gonna get it's obviously that it seems like we're building towards a who's the best garage MC pod, not this one, but it's gonna happen, <laughs> isn't it? I think so. Yeah, because we've done the the this is the best tunes. And there's you know we haven't got like we haven't we haven't even really brushed this. Well, we, we think we covered everything, but we could go delve much deeper. We haven't ranked them. Yeah, just said which ones we like and what are the important ones. But if we were to go, which well, you said Miss Dynamite is the best MC of all time. And uh, yeah, and also just look at the. I'm <laughs> just saying, look at the track record. The evidence supports it. It's like also, some MCs are sound better on records, and some are better live. Hundred so, percent. So you've got to judge it, you know, in that kind of context. What about Mystique? Was it? Yeah. Alicia's underrated at the time. Now, now I, don't get me wrong. Now it's like Alicia's like what strictly dancing or um, Britain's Got Talent or whatever like that. We but, did a remix for her. Yeah, we did actually. Did we? When she, there's that um, bump and flex dub of "Be with Me," she <laughs> yeah. goes over and it's like, all right, okay, because it was yeah. after bump and flex had just done the remix of Kleptomaniacs. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Baby, so they had that dubby. And cool. then they kind of were going down that route of doing that sort of soca sort of dub beat, yeah. and they did a dub of "Be with Me," and she rode over it, and everyone was like, "Ah." Ain't that bad actually. This is all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but now nah, you can like I don't know playing a li- like an Alicia based track now. People are like oh, this. All right. This yeah. w- what about Craig David? Because when he MCs, he's actually very good. What track though? I just think not track wise. You hear him freestyle like. There's the remix of Walking Away, uh, Chunky's remix yeah. of Walking Away that he does. Like I think he does the first verse to it in rapping. It's a one oh, of the yeah, yeah. MCing the guy he can MC like let's not 
shied away from that. But yeah, there's there's so many to mention, isn't there? So we haven't really. Kn- there's probably going to be a few we've missed. So yeah, let comments. Us, let us know what we've missed. I think. We- oh, <laughs> Donada is the best. <laughs> <laughs> skibbity be down, skibbity down, skibbity. So this is how we do. We bubble in true. I actually think the Fong song remix oh, is very good though with Alistair. Definitely. Very tight that one. That remix is sick. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of MCs that yeah didn't that were smashed it live that were beloved, but necessarily didn't get those sort of legendary tunes. Yeah, it didn't work so well on records, but when you go see them live, you get the full right. package from them. Yeah. So. so yeah, let us know in the comments of those. Um, let us know which ones we've missed out. Let us know what are your least favorite ones as well. Let's start some chat. If there's any that you go, no, I can't be doing with that anymore. Uh, why did people put in their favourite MCs as well? And what what would be the best your top three MCs? Yeah, because prep us for prep us for this because that conversation is gonna it's gonna happen. We like some it's prep. We like some prep, don't we? You're not gonna like it, but it's gonna happen. We're gonna have that conversation. We're gonna figure <laughs> it out. We're gonna separate the men from the boys. <laughs> it's gonna best happen. MCs. Yeah, and you know it's gonna be a tough one because you're thinking about it now. Yeah. <laughs> you got to play who's the best. But, but yeah, yeah. But no, that was a that was a fucking that was a good subject. So we didn't play any music, so we can't get yeah cut out. We're not going to get taken down by Warner or any of the others. But we'll put uh, <laughs> we'll put links in the comments to that heartless crew if I can find it. That mystique dub. Yeah, are we going to put these on the playlist? Some of these songs, if they're available, some might maybe not we'll start be a different available. playlist of stuff of older stuff. Yeah, yeah or if we put YouTube comments. Yeah, just put the songs in the comments. Maybe we yeah. can make a separate playlist with just older stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, we can do like a crate diggers playlist, and we can put the stuff, the vocal stuff, on the first one. So yeah, MC stuff that's available, we'll yeah. put in there. So it might, maybe not all of them. So we'll call this there. crate diggers as well, then crate diggers MC tunes edition. There we are. And then we can do a crate diggers playlist. So there we go. We're going to quickly do a playlist now. Gary share crate diggers. Yep. Yeah. Good fuck. Yeah. What what a fucking great day for talking about garage. <laughs> Smash it, gents. See you soon. See you later. Yeah.